Now, the price for retaining Ceuta was extremely high, and the citadel near the Strait of Gibraltar, combined with the history of the sainted prince, became the ingenium for a new chivalric campaign to Morocco, one launched by the son of King Duarte, King Alfonso V, who reached his majority in 1455. In 1458, Alfonso V led an expedition to North Africa, and he succeeded in taking Kassar el Sakir, the little castle, on October 23rd to 24th. Bolstered by this 1458 victory, the monarch and his brother Fernando attempted additional campaigns to Morocco in 1463 and 64, but these ventures failed. Finally, in late August of 1471, Alfonso V captured Asilla and then Tangier, and this ultimate triumph is commemorated in the tapestries displayed in the exhibition here, The Invention of Glory. Before analyzing the four panels, however, I want to address, or I would like to address, the content of two additional tapestries housed at Pastrana, which await restoration and measure 12 feet in height by 13 to 35 feet in width. They significantly concern Alfonso V's 1458 expedition to Kassar el Seguir, a victory achieved with 25,000 men and 200 ships. These panels would have been the first of the Pastrana tapestries to have been commissioned and woven in Flanders. Stylistically, they appear to have been the work of a different designer. Both panels portray events occurring in Lagos, Portugal, before the fleet sailed for Morocco, specifically the ceremonial kissing of hands and mass, and the embarkation of King Alfonso V and his troops into Carrex. Lagos was called La Cobriga by the Romans during the Punic Wars, a Celtic term which means lakes. The port is part of a larger coastal region along the Atlantic Ocean known as the Algarve or Algarab by the early 8th century North African Berbers who invaded Lusitania. In 1249, Alfonso III, the fifth king of Portugal, recaptured Lagos and he was the first monarch to use the title King of Portugal and the Algarve. King Juan I's fleet, which sailed for Ceuta in 1415, assembled at the fortress of Lagos and the old port, which lies at the mouth of the Ben Safrim River, became a stepping stone for the maritime empire of Portugal during, during the Renaissance Age of Exploration. The cliffs of Lagos and the long Mea Praia Beach, which extends uh, from the city, provide scenic views which are enjoyed by many visitors today. For instance, Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie maintain a vacation home in Lagos. Yeah. I do enjoy action pictures. That was for my husband, incidentally, in Washington. <laughs> Turning now to the adventures unfolding in the tapestries at Pastrana, and as prelude to a discussion of works in the current exhibition, let us consider action in the unrestored two panels, the ceremonial mass and the kissing of hands. Before the flotilla set sail for North Africa provides a multi-figured composition which is divided into narrative segments. On the far left, noble knights gather around King Alfonso V to kiss his hands in a chivalric oath of fealty. The monarch is portrayed in full armor and chain mail, wearing over his helmet a gold crown circlet surmounted by trefoil tains and smaller finials. In the middle section, a stately cavalcade moves to the right while the monarch's brother Fernando rides a scarlet carpacined horse, the king's steed has no rider. Because Alfonso V walks in full armor beneath a canopy of honor upheld by favored young courtiers. On the far right, diverse ecclesiastics enter the Gothic portal of the Augustinian Church of Santa Maria to officiate in the service of the Mass. Dedicated to Our Lady of Grace, the 14th century edifice survives today at the back of the Pratha or town square and to the right of a contemporary statue of Prince Enrique the Navigator looking out to sea. 
The Iglesia Santa Maria, where Prince Enrique was initially buried in 1460, was remodeled during the 16th century and rebuilt following the November 1, 1755 Lisbon earthquake. Lagos was greatly affected by this seismic event and subsequent tsunami. The second unrestored tapestry, which portrays the embarkation of the departing King Alfonso and his troops into Carrax, is best understood by considering the layout of the harbor at Lagos. Troops and supplies would have been boarded from opposite bulwark quays. The medieval Moorish castle of the governors of the Algarve at Lagos is situated very near the Church of Santa Maria and the square of Henry the Navigator. Defensive walls still surround the old quarter of the town. On the right side of the tapestry are several knights in fabric-covered brigantine armor, vizard sallets, chainmail, and greaves, or metal leg coverings. They stand and sit before the walls of the governor's palace. The opposite bank to the left also is occupied by impressive warriors. Especially noteworthy is a young knight with a plumed vizier sallet and polychrome shield who stands on a gangplank. An older commander at the bow of a foreground carrot holds a banner with his mitten gauntlets. This stately warrior has exceptional brigantine armor covered with cut velvet and brocaded fabric, supple leather boots, and protective steel rosettes, cooters at his elbows and pollions at his knees. Some men in his ship wear carpacetes, which are bell-shaped, open-faced helmets, which were often overlaid in heavy material. With the untying of the mooring rope by a turbaned Moroccan scout, a sail is hoisted by another seaman to signify fair winds. All the Portuguese vessels display red crosses, emblems denoting the military order of Christ. King Alfonso V stands in the dominant carrack. Close to trumpeters who signal his fame, he is portrayed with a crown circlet over a vizard salad with gold-edged boof covering his lower face. He holds a glaive, a shafted polearm weapon with a sharp blade on one side, which was used for hand-to-hand -hand combat. Clearly, clearly, the monarch courage is accented. Turning now to the four Pastrana panels of the exhibition, The Invention of Glory. The subjects illustrate events occurring in 1471, 14 years later than the 1458 Kassar el Sakir expedition. But there appears to be no break in a sequential story, as the men of the Portuguese flotilla in 1471 would have experienced the ceremonial kiss of hands and attended mass at Lagos before setting sail for the coast of Africa. The fleet had departed the Algarve on August 15, 1471, the feast day of the Assumption of the Virgin Mary, always an auspicious time to begin an enterprise, but also because the Nortada trade winds blowing from the northwest favored good sailing and a southerly current up to a knot. Within five days, on August 20th, the expedition landed at Asella, the territory of which had already been uh, reconnoitered by the scouts Vicente Samos and Pedro de Alcasoba. The first restored Pastrana tapestry presents the difficult disembarkation of the Portuguese troops at Arcilla. The legend of the tapestry informs there were 400 ships in a rough sea. Alfonso V ordered his men ashore, but many lives were lost on the reef, about 200 troops. Chronicles inform that Alfonso V and Prince Juan also were accompanied by the royal standard bearer, Duarte de Almeida. Now on the left is the flagship of the monarch, heavily adorned with the exclusions of Portugal. The personal insignia banner of Alfonso V can be readily identified. The Rodizio, or water wheel, was chosen by the king as his own signature device after the death in 1455 of his beloved wife Isabel. The perpetual turning of the water wheel alluded to his continued tears of sorrow. Elsewhere, and if you look for it, you'll see the word jamais appearing within the core construction of the wheel. And this French term means never, jamais. Basically, he will never forget his wife or love another. 
In any case, the water wheel functions as a leitmotif to mark the specific location of Portugal's ruler in the tapestry compositions. Infantry men and crossbow men were transported to shore from the carracks and smaller wooden vessels, which must have been a perilous endeavor with the rocky coastline of Asilla. The stylized patterns denoting waves of water in the tapestries veiled the horror of death by drowning that occurred with the disembarkation of troops, all of whom were hampered by heavy brigantine metal plates covered in fabric, weapons held in baldrics or chest belts, and unwieldy spears. In full armor and chain mail with vizor salad and chen boof, Alfonso V and Prince Juan in velvet capacete sailed with their men in smaller boats through the rocky reefs. In the same tapestry on the lower right, I mean sorry, on the upper right, the monarch and his son again are portrayed in their battle armor, approaching the walls of Arcilla. Looking at the approaching Portuguese troops from the walls, the turbaned defenders of Arcilla brandished curving scimitars, lances, and polychrome shields. Morocco's great center of Fez was renowned for the manufacture of the adarga, a leather shield that either was heart-shaped or formed of overlapping ovals. The walls of Asilla that still stand provide an idea of the type of heavy fortifications confronting the Portuguese infantry in 1471. These walls encased the Almedina, or Old City, which still remains a warren of narrow interlocking streets. Writing in 1573, the chronicler Luis de Marmo Carvajal confirms King Alfonso V issued an order to construct a wooden palisade to isolate the town. 